in the late 90s, early 2000s, or mid to late 90s, and early 2000s, the height of living room sophistication was a MIDI system, uh, very much like this one. This is an LG FFH uh, 5670, and... I've just plugged it all in. We're going to go for the first turn on to see if it works. So we'll just go to tuner. And let's see if we can tune it in. And it was right next to the live buildings. And that buildings. was 15,000 fans were in that Euro village. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, 15,000. I just, look, I sung out and to the left of me, buildings, to the right of me was the River Mersey in front of me. was just there we are. People and I thought, that I seems to have worked. am the luckiest big bird yeah. in showbiz right I, now. Because it just home. felt so lovely. Yeah, so it just felt right. Vocal. It was so just, many people in the crowd, gorgeous. It was just brilliant. And just the way that Liverpool took over Eurovision. I mean, it was Classic. Jazz, rock, flat. This was something that was coming in at the time. Was this um, instead of having a graphical uh, graphic equaliser, you had presets depending on what you were listening to. So if I'm listening to vocal, I'll set it to vocal. If I'm listening to classical, I'm wondering if I can find a classical station. Me, I'm trying to see if there is like a skinny little twink in it. That's Radio 4. I thought Radio 3 was before Radio 4 on the dial. Right, let's try classic FM. You've got many more there we are. So that's classical. Back to vocal. Pop. Rock. Flat, jazz, back to classical. And it's quite loud. Let's see if the tape works. So let's find the cassette. Uh, I had one earlier. There, there it is. Let's try cassette or a cassette. So tape mode. Open up tape B first, and let's pop this in. Returning from their wedding journey, arrived at Lurk Manor in the middle That's of January. Vocal. There we go. A light snow was falling as they descended at the door, and in the morning, when Dorothy had passed from her dressing room into the blue-green boudoir, That's better. the very furniture in the room seemed to have shrunk since she saw it before. That's really not bad. In the at first all, minutes, actually. when Dorothea looked out, she felt nothing but the dreary oppression. Yeah, not bad. Then came a keen remembrance. And turning away from the window, she walked so around the room. So let's 
stop and let's see if we can get into temp A, which seems to be not allowing me in. So it's probably just something inside there that's at fault. So we'll turn it off, we'll unplug it, and we'll have a look inside and see if we can fix that issue. There we go. So let's get a bit closer to the action. So we're unplugged at the moment. And what we will do is disconnect the speakers and we'll get those moved out of the way so that we can just focus on the unit itself. So there's one speaker, there's another speaker. And it has to be said, the quality is really not bad at all. I am quite surprised, but that was the thing with these things. They were, they weren't audio file quality, but they were more than acceptable. Now, this has actually got two side panels by the looks of it. So you don't have to remove all of them. You can remove uh, just one, I think, by the looks of it. It is unplugged. It will be interesting to see what it looks like inside. I'm imagining, like a lot of stuff of this sort of era, you're going to have obviously well, the CD mechanism at the top, but everything is going to be up against there, so there's not going to be any separate special amplifier or anything. I may be uh, proven wrong, and I hope I am. And there we are, that's all the screws for that panel. And I am proven wrong because you have a large board here as well. And you've actually got, um, looking in there, if we go in, that looks like the amplifier, judging by the heat sink. So all of the amplification is done separately as well. It's not all up against that single front board. You've got another board at the back there, which is a separate power supply module. And then you've got obviously the tape deck and everything else at the front there. Now, let's see if we can see anything when I push this, if anything happens. So you can see that move in there. So we need to get this board out of the way, or probably more likely, take tilt the front panel out. That does mean that I'll need to pop the other side off as well. So I'll quickly get these out. And there's that one. Whoops. And this one. And there we are. So that one comes off. And you can actually see that power supply board in more detail. Uh, big old step down transformer, series of fuses, that then goes into this board over here where we have the amplifier, so we've got this nice big fat heat sink here, and that looks like it has the amplification circuit and also um, the power distribution circuit, you can see there is a bridge rectifier. So, and obviously capacitors related to 
um, power supplies, those big fat capacitors. So it's actually quite interesting that they have separated that from here. And this board obviously has multiple uses because there are a lot of empty spaces on here. But you do have obviously some main fuses. Then everything is carried over to this board. So that board is part hot and then part cold. Obviously once you go, or is it? No, hang on a minute. I tell lies, I think this board is cold. So this is hot, obviously high voltage. That is then reduced to a lower voltage and it's then rectified over there to DC. Obviously with the bridge rectifier that you can see. Actually, not sure if you can see that. Sorry, let me point it out there. That's your bridge rectifier right there. So let's go back to this. So we'll need to probably pop out one, two, three, four screws on this side and then four on the other side. And that will get us access to be able to hopefully sort out that cassette release mechanism. And we'll just need to remember that we have gold screws at the bottom. Also, you can actually see the belts for the tape deck there, and they look like replacing them would not be the end of the world. And you've got all of this huge board here, which is obviously for all of the logic functions. And obviously the amplifier has been kept nicely separated on its own board with the power supply, which sort of kind of makes sense in a way. So on this side, we've only got three because this board is obviously in the way. And also this board seems to serve the speakers, the aerial in and the phono in. A lot of it is surface mount so it's not really user serviceable unfortunately. Uh, the power supply phase probably is more user serviceable than anything else on there but because there is a lot of logic involved in this, in other words printed circuits etc, you're going to need a suitable um, desoldering and resoldering bench to be able to do anything with one of these. Aside from basic stuff like I'm doing. So that's that freed off. Let's have a look underneath, see if there are any... Yep, there's a couple of screws on the bottom as well. So. We'll just pop those out. There we go. And then hopefully this will start to come away. The other thing is because you've got that CD mechanism in there. There's every possibility that you would need the tray out to be able to do it. So that is disconnected. There's nothing at the top. I'm now beginning to wonder if it's easier to try and reach in to sort it out. So I actually go through into here. So you can see where I'm pressing. So if you press that one, that obviously comes out there, latches back in. 
I'll just see if I can zoom in. Right, so I'll see if I can zoom in. And we'll see if we can focus. So it's this thing here, there, which we're dealing with. And we've obviously got another one over on the other side. I can't feel anything that's broken there, so I don't think it's broken at all. open and yeah I think that might be let's have a look at this one let's have a look and see what this does so uh, there's a latch on this one that goes over and then presses back in. Does it do the same on this one? So, yeah, it should do, but... Yeah, so it's just not latching anymore, unfortunately. I don't think it will latch again. That looks like it has latched its last. Unfortunately. Interestingly, it is actually screwed into case so I might be able potentially to see if I can work out a way to unscrew it so it's there's the screw for it there Let's see if I can go and just the screwdriver bit. Let's see if it's in loose enough to just be taken off with just my fingers. It isn't, but I do have some little nose pliers that I can bring into the battle. So we'll just try this. And then what we'll do is we'll go in. We'll go onto the screw. I'll actually try to do this differently. So onto the screw. That's on the screw. screw oh, damn it. it would be easier if I could get the whole front off but I don't think that's going to happen unfortunately Unless there's a way I can just pull it forward. 
enough. No. Don't think that really wants to do that. Let's put that back. Right, I'm going to have a little battle with this and see where I am in the moon. So to get to my little uh, release mechanism, what I've had to do is um, disconnect the, or unscrew the CD tray at the back, holding the whole CD mechanism in. And then that allows me to get this off, which is the little release mechanism. And there doesn't really look like there's anything wrong with it. It's not broken in any way. It's doing everything that it should. So I'm not exactly certain why it's not working. So let's put it back in again. So move this up. angle down there we should be able to hopefully see the action so there are some ribbon cables in here you need to be careful with those because you don't want to be pulling those off of the respective boards so that was under more tension than I would like but it seems okay for the minute so let's pop this back in. This may be a case that you're never going to be able to use deck A, unfortunately. But we'll put it back in and we'll actually have a look and see if we can work out how it's working because it should just uh, sort of allow you to click the tape into place. There we go. So let's go back in. Oh, also to get this off as well, there is a little point here and there's a screw that goes into this board here that you need to release as well. So you need to release three screws at the back, actually five screws at the back because this top cover is also attached at the front as well. So there's three screws that hold the CD mechanism in and then another two screws that hold this top cover in place. So. Let's get in onto the action. We can actually see, hopefully, what this is trying to do. So let's focus in on that. So you press this, that should go down, and then that should click up to latch this into place. So you should be able to go in and then that should latch up and then into place like that and then you press it again and it should then unlatch it so you should be able to press it again and unlatch it but it looks like for whatever reason it's stuck in place and not latching properly. Now it might be, could be that the cassette door itself over the years has possibly warped slightly and is out of alignment, which is possible. Because you have to then manually sort of just pop that back in and then to get it out again you press it, you have to sort of pull it like that. and then that comes out. Press. Yeah, actually there is a lot of movement there, so there, I don't think there's as much movement on the other side. So it might be because it's moving around quite a bit like that. And I don't think the other side is.
if I could find the other side. Uh, it still moves around. Maybe not as much as this one though, because that there is quite a lot of movement there. But surely that shouldn't have too much of a bearing on it. The other possibility is it's just weak springs. So these springs could have weakened. Let's take it off again and let's have a look at it and see if there's anything we can do with it. God knows how many screws have come off this. I've had to remove a lot of screws just to be able to get this little part out. So you can see why people would just bin these things whenever there was a, like a hint of a problem. So, let's see if I can do anything with the spring. Very much doubt it. But I'm trying to see if I can if I can slightly bend it to try and increase the tension. Yeah, that's, that's a bit more. Uh, there's still a fair amount of play, but I think that is going to be normal. That does feel slightly more... That does feel stiffer, actually. So what I've done is I've crimped the metal in slightly. And that does seem to, because obviously if you decrease the distance, it does seem to allow it to spring a little bit more. This is unfortunately one of those parts that's probably no longer available. Or it is available, but you have to take, you have to get the whole front panel. And to be honest with you, with the age of it, I very much doubt there are still spare parts for this. Uh, the belts are just about user serviceable. But they would be a pain to get to. I thought earlier that they would be quite easy to get to, but looking at it, you're going to have to take this front panel off, and then you're going to have to um, take this off to get to the tape, because the motor is screwed in from the front. But to be honest, the belts on this are actually okay at the minute. Yeah, that hasn't actually made any difference at all. So that goes down. And what it should do is then go back up again to get it to lip into position. Uh, let's try something else. do anything. I was thinking of trimming a little bit of the plastic off but I don't think that would help because then you lose the ability to latch um, to latch it in place. Um, I can't space it because then it would be too far. I think, unfortunately, this is going to be a case where you're going to have to live with it. 
because there's no adjustment in this at all. So let me just hold this in place loosely. So that would come down. And then that should, when you get back, that should latch up like that. And if there wasn't as much movement there, that would latch up. Now hang on a moment. So the spring is on there. So I'm trying to see if I can work the spring off of the little spindle. So there's a little spindle there, but it's it does look like it's held in. So that might not be possible. So managed to do that. I've actually managed to take that off. So I wonder... So what I'm doing now is I'm just tearing up a little piece of cardboard and I'm going to pop the cardboard, put a little slit into the cardboard. And I'm going to try and pop the cardboard in such a way so then it goes over like so. So it's almost like acting like a washer. If I actually go into the top there. Now, let's see if I can get this prong back on again. So, that comes in at the side, and then you go under and over, so it actually does come out because you'd go all the way out like that to pull it off, and then you come all the way back in again to get it back in. I've just realized I just need to try and get that back in again. There we are, so that's back in. Now, let's see if that rudimentary washer makes a difference. Sadly not. No. 
no difference at all, unfortunately. I thought it would because it was taking out some of the some of the movement in this, but I don't think it is making a difference. Yeah, I'm going to have to leave that in place, unfortunately. So let's try it actually with this in place. Let's say put this here. No, it doesn't even allow it to unlatch. Okay. Well, we tried and we failed but at least we tried. Right, I'm gonna pause this, get this back together, and you'll rejoin me once all of this and the hundreds of screws are back in place. So I've put it all back together, just testing that the, whoops, testing that the CD works, uh, which it does. Um, I've got three discs in there, so this is disc two at the moment. If I go to disc one, and see if it reads disc one. Obviously that won't open, but that one still does. So that's something. And it is... Yeah, it's reading disc one. Uh, disc three. Yep, reading disc three as well. So, would I recommend one of these to someone that's wanting something to listen to CDs, maybe connect a record player to it, and possibly listen to tapes? <sighs> They're not that expensive. Uh, they, you get a lot of bang for your buck, and they don't actually sound totally horrible. This is something I quite like about them, I think. Yeah, you can do that. You can actually open the drawer whilst the active CD is spinning, which is quite cool. So you can then sort of change what music you have and then close it again. So that's quite a nice feature. But yeah, overall, it's not a bad little unit. I'm not sure if I've got uh, the space for it, unfortunately. So this one might be a catch and release sort of type affair. But it's, yeah, it really isn't bad. If you're after something of this sort of nature, I can highly recommend one. Anyway, for the moment, that is all we have time for. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you again very soon. Take care and thanks for watching.